just uh, look at your team is doing a great job out there too and maybe a little run down <coughs> I like to take credit, but credit goes with the people that give you the power. And, uh, you know, it starts uh, at Mike Neff and uh, right down the line, uh, Jimmy Prock and uh, Dean Antonelli and Ron Douglas, and, and it's just what it's all about. And we've been struggling, without a doubt. I did stories for all of you. Uh, and uh, my dad always taught me when you're struggling, don't change in the middle of the stream. Don't forget which way you're going. Don't swim back. That's going backwards. Uh, and uh, we, well, the guys believe in me, and I believe in them, and they, they turn my car, cars around. I mean, this is <clears throat> this only, you know, my daughter won the opening race at, at uh, Pomona, and then we've struggled since then. So, uh, the one, two, and three, when you look at Ford and Auto Club, Castro, Traxxas, them people, this means a lot that John Ford still knows what he's doing, because I do. And. Uh, but I surround myself. With what does that mean at this uh, stage? Well, it was so smooth on that run. I told Neff, it'll run better. And uh, he said, okay, but we have to race tomorrow. Slowed it down on that run, and it still spun at the other end. When I went past the lights, whew, I almost got the wall down there. When I hit the chutes, it sucked me over. So he's a real sharp cookie. But, but I knew that, you know, um, with his driving ability and what he did on the outside, uh, uh, tuning the car and driving it the last two years, you know, getting close on the championship right down on the last day, but it was actually his choice to put me back with him uh, and, and the move of, of Dean Antonelli to go to the dragster because Dean taught Ashley the, the funny car business and I wanted a, a guy that knew how to handle a woman and, and uh, of course Ron Douglas was with Ashley and, and, uh, and, and women, they're great, but sometimes in a race car, a little bit different and you got to know how to work with them. Uh, Ron Tolver was a guy, worked with Shirley. And I talked to him years back, but he wasn't available. But with, with uh, Ron Douglas and, and, uh, and Dean Antonelli, they groomed, they, they took Ashley. So I knew they could take Courtney and Brittany. So, you've got so a far, so maybe on the way. You qualify number one. You ought to be doing cartwheels, right? In, in trouble already. <laughs> uh, in the interview down there, they put the headphones on me and set me down. And I started talking about my family and, and that we don't deal, our family doesn't deal in. In, in dates, you know, uh, I said, well, when's the baby coming? She said, May, and, and I said, May 4th, maybe my birthday. And she said, no, Dad, Topeka weekend. That's how my family deals. And I, I, we honeymoon Lori and I at Fremont at the NHRA Nationals. Uh, uh, th th that's the way our life has always been. So why, why change now? But uh, then I jumped on there and I said, but actually it was two nights ago. Elon knows, trying to finish a video for my sponsors, Traxxas and those guys, and I had to have it. And and I actually was being awful quiet, I didn't know what's wrong with her. I finally said, you okay, you're not mad at me, are you? No, Dad, just want to get this done. So I hung up and I called back, and my, my wife took the phone and said, can't speak to Ashley anymore, no were you done? But Ashley was going to finish that video before she went home. Then they said she left, got her nails done, got her hair done, and she went home and said, now, tell Dad, we'll call him. So. <laughs> It's time. So I got a great family. Jacob's home with them right now, and Autumn and my, my daughter Adra, and this is a big deal. So if you think this is big, here us coming out of a slump and being one, two, and three, the big deal is that baby, because that's what really matters in the big picture. And um, number one qualifier with the conditions with humidity, and you were talking about being smooth, but the sun kind of coming in and out with the clouds and everything. How did that play? You know, it's really funny. It was 125 yesterday, 126. Temp, and, and, and I said, that's awful hot. And then it ran that, it ran a heck to run 11, yeah, run 11th, yeah. I think. And I thought, well, that's pretty good. And then psh, my daughter and Robert both ran 06. I thought, geez. But, but our technologies work. The Ford engineers, John Metal, and the people that work on the stuff we create, we built three or four chassis because we have to have safety. We have to with the Eric Medlin project. And, and yet our cars, that dragster is 110 pounds heavy. That dragster is carrying, and my, my daughter, she's only five foot two, or four foot nine, I don't even know how big she is. But, but that, that car is really heavy uh, because of all the safety that's on it and the three rail. And Courtney's is, is, is a heavy car too because it's three rails, but not as bad. But then it ran 05. And so we went to a car with body, with strength in it for safety, with the Ford engineers, Neff wanted to try it, uh, and, uh, and so we've run good with all three of them. And we thought maybe there's something in the chassis. 
I don't know what's going on, but, uh, you know, like I told Neff this morning, <clears throat> if I knew what was going on, I'd be, he said, what do you think? I said, well, if I knew, I'd be paying myself when I pay you. <laughs> you know, that's what you guys do. But that's how we're a good team. They do that. They do that. Even in my driving, when I struggle, with all my experience, Mike Neff will talk to me and say, hey, you realize you're oversteering the car a lot? Why? And I, you, I don't know. You just get into a groove. <laughs> Courtney was doing the same thing. Courtney said, Dad, I'm driving out of the groove. You know, I fell down the points. I, I've been driving out of the groove the last three races. Keep smoking the tires. And I'm thinking, well, maybe it ain't you. And they kept looking at the videos. Maybe it is you, honey. But well, what am I doing? And I said, you're trying to keep that point sleep. She goes, right, what do you mean? I said, you know the guys I've watched that had the point sleep lose it? You know what I'm saying? Because you start thinking on what you got to do different. Oh, I got to keep this point sleep. Now I got to be perfect. Well, maybe being loose and not focusing so much on driving made you go A to B. And now all of a sudden, like, I got to make sure it's straight. So you're, and I said, just go out there today and forget about the point sleep. She said, yeah, I've been knocked down. Fourth, I think I already am right now. And then every run, she went down it. So.